Welcome back everybody, this is Mr. Navarrete, and today we will be going over Lewis dots number two. So, let's get started. For all of these questions, it asks to draw the electric dot structure of the following atoms and to identify their geometric type as well as their molecular shape. So, that's what we're going to be doing for the next following question. We know that each iodine is going to have seven electrons. Drawing both of them, they should look a little something like this. Now, when you move them together, it'll present us with this molecule. Looking at the type, the type of molecule that we are making, since it is a diatomic molecule, it is going to be an A2 molecule. And looking at the shape, we're going to have a linear shape for the molecule, just going to be in a straight line. For our next molecule, we're going to have a boron triiodide molecule. So boron is going to have three valence electrons and iodine, each one is going to have seven. So your Lewis dot structure should look a little like this. Looking at the geometry type that it would form, it would be an A, we only have one boron, and we have three other atoms around it, AB3, and the molecular ship that it would form would be triangular. Here on my image, we don't see the triangular shape as much, but just know that when we are looking at these molecules, these iodines are going to want to be as far away from each other as possible leading to the triangular shape. For our next one, we have methane, CH4. Carbon is gonna have four valence electrons. Each hydrogen is gonna have one. So your Lewis dot structure should look a little something like this. For the geometry type, we have one carbon as our center. We have four around it, so it'd be A, B, four. Looking at the molecular shape that it would form, A, B, four gives us a tetrahedral. Now, on my drawing, you can't really see the tetrahedral, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw it in a different way that will allow us to see that tetrahedron. Again, we do have carbon as our center atom, and this one would be pulling on top, so above the page, and these three would all be as far away as they could from each other, and they would be below the page. For our next molecule, we have carbon dioxide, Carbon is going to have four valence electrons. Oxygen is going to have two. So your Lewis dot structure should look a little something like this. Here, carbon is double bonded to both oxygens. Whether it's a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond, it doesn't change the geometry type that it would form. So in this case, we still have carbon, one center atom, with two around it. It would form an A, B, two. And in this case, it would give us a molecular shape of linear. Next, we have phosphorus trichloride. Phosphorus is going to have five valence electrons, and each chlorine is going to have seven. So your Lewis dot structure should look a little something like this. Here, we have phosphorus as our center atom. It's going to have eight valence electrons. Each chlorine is going to have eight. Phosphorus is going to be our center, A. We have three chlorines bonded to it, so B3. But we can't forget about that extra lone pair. That lone pair is still present and is still going to affect the molecular shape of our molecule. So we have to write that one in as well, A, B3, E. And that one gives us a shape of triangular pyramidal. If we were to draw it in a 3D structure, we see that the chlorines are all gonna make this triangular pyramid on the bottom. The lone pair is still gonna be on top and they're all gonna be repelling each other, wanna be as far away from each other as they possibly can. And this is the shape that we would ultimately end up with. For our next molecule, we're gonna have phosphorus pentabromide. Phosphorus is gonna have five valence electrons. Each bromine is gonna have seven. So when we create our lowest dot structure, it should look a little something like this. Remember that because phosphorus is in the third period, it can hold more than eight electrons. In this case, it's gonna hold a total of 10 electrons. The other two are gonna be put in the D orbital. And in this case, because we're gonna have phosphorus as our center, A, and five bromines around it, we're gonna have a geometry type of AB5, A for our center, five around it. And that's gonna give us a molecular shape of trigonal bipyramidal. Now if we were to draw it in a 3D way, our structure would look a little something like this, where 
these three bromines would form a triangular base and they would form a little pyramid with the bromine that's coming out of the page and with the bromine that is below the page. So for our next molecule, we have H2O. Hydrogen is gonna have one valence electron each and oxygen is gonna have six valence electrons. So when we do our Lewis dot structure, it should look a little something like this. This way, the oxygen has six valence electrons, hydrogen has two. Looking at the geometry type, we have oxygen as our center molecule. Then we have two hydrogens next to it. That means we're gonna have an AB2 geometry type. And when we look to see what type of molecular shape that would give us, it would give us a bent molecular shape. Now, if we were to look at this in a 3D structure, it would look a little something like this, where we would have the two hydrogens being as far away as possible from each other. And we'd have both of the lone pairs, one coming out of the page and the one going behind, but at an angle where they can all be as far away as possible and still being stable with each other. For our next molecule, we're gonna have an oxygen molecule. Oxygen is gonna have six valence electrons each. So when we draw our Lewis dot structure, it should look a little something like this. Remember that oxygen is gonna be double bonded to itself, to the other oxygen. This is gonna give us a geometry type of A2, since it's gonna be diatomic. And because both of them are gonna be in line with each other, it'll give us a molecular shape of linear. For our next molecule, we have sulfur hexachloride. Sulfur is gonna have six valence electrons, meaning that we're gonna be able to bind six other atoms to it. Each chlorine is gonna have seven valence electrons. So when we draw our Lewis dot structure, it should look a little something like this. Sulfur can hold more than eight valence electrons since it's in the third period. And each chlorine is gonna have eight valence electrons. So we have one central molecule with six around it. That's gonna give us a geometry type of AB6. And looking at our chart to see what type of molecular shape it would give us, we would get an octahedral. Now looking at the dot diagrams, it might be a little difficult to see that octahedral. So if we see it in a three dimensional, here we can see that each chlorine or these four chlorines are gonna make kind of like a base, allowing us to make these pyramids and it's gonna happen on both sides. creating an octahedral. For our next molecule, we're gonna have sulfur tetrafluoride. So sulfur, again, six valence electrons. Fluoride is gonna have seven valence electrons. So when we draw our dot structure, it should look a little something like this. Sulfur is gonna have more than eight valence electrons, but it's okay because it's in the third period and it can just push those into the next orbital. And each fluorine is gonna have eight. Sulfur is gonna be our central molecule. We're gonna have four atoms attached to it and we can't forget that lone pair. So we're gonna get a geometry type of AB4E, which would give us a molecular shape of seesaw. Again, it's a little difficult seeing it with our dot structures. So if we kind of redraw it, here we can kind of use these two fluorines as like the legs of a seesaw, the, the fulcrum, and these would be the other sides with our lone pair being at the top. For our next molecule, we have nitrogen trichloride. Nitrogen is gonna have five valence electrons. Each chlorine is gonna have seven. So when we draw the with dot structures, they should look something like this. We have nitrogen as our central molecule. We're gonna have three things attached to it. And we still have that lone pair. So we're gonna get a geometry type of A, B, three, E, and that's gonna give us a molecular shape of triangular pyramidal. And this shape is gonna be very, very similar to the one that we did for number five. For our next molecule, we have sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur is gonna have six valence electrons. Each fluoride is gonna have seven. So when we draw our Lewis dot structures, which looks something like this, Remember, sulfur, because it's in the third period, it can hold more than eight valence electrons. 
So it's just going to push all the extra ones into the d orbital. Each fluorine is going to have eight electrons. We have sulfur as our central, six things attached to it. So we're going to get a geometry type of AB6, which is going to give us a molecular shape of octahedral. And if you need to see what it looks like, you can just go back to number nine and it's going to be the exact same shape. For our next one, we have iodide pentafluoride. Iodine is going to have seven valence electrons. Each fluorine is going to have seven valence electrons. So when we draw our Lewis dot structure, it should look something like this. Remember, because iodine is below the third period, it can hold more than eight electrons. So each fluorine is going to have eight. And iodine is going to have 10. Iodine is our central molecule. We have five things attached to it along with that lone pair. So that's going to give us a geometry type of a B5E. And when we look to see what molecular shape it's going to give us, it's a square pyramidal. And again, seeing these like this, it's a little difficult to see what they actually look like. So if we redraw it, here we can see that these four fluorines are going to make like the base of the pyramid. And this lone pair on top is just going to keep everything else in place. For next one, we're going to have phosphorus tribromide. Phosphorus is going to have five valence electrons, and bromine, each one is going to have seven valence electrons. So when we do our Lewis dot structure, it should look something like this. Each bromine is going to have eight, and phosphorus is going to have eight. Phosphorus is our center, so we're going to have three things attached to it, and it's going to have that one lone pair. So it's going to give us a geometry type of AB3E. And when we look to see what molecular shape it gives us, it gives us a triangular pyramidal. For our next molecule, we have a triiodide ion. Each iodine is going to have seven valence electrons, but we're going to have that extra electron from the ion. So before we add that extra electron, our Lewis dot structure should look a little something like this. Each of these iodides is going to have eight. However, my iodine has a, has a lone electron there. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this extra electron and I'm just going to put it here so that we don't have a lone pair anymore. And because it's an ion, we can't forget to draw it in brackets. Iodine is going to be in the center. It's going to have two things attached to it and it's going to have one, two, three lone pairs. So it's going to give us a geometry type of AB2E3, and looking at our chart, we see that that gives us a linear molecule. And believe it or not, it is going to be linear. Looking at it right now, it might seem a little difficult, but if we redraw it, here we can see that these iodines are all just going to be in a straight line to each other, and our lone pairs, our valence electrons, are going to be making sure that these two iodines are as far away as each other as possible. For our next one, we have xenon tetrafluoride. Xenon is going to have eight valence electrons and fluorine, each one's going to have seven. And yes, even though xenon does have eight valence electrons, it is going to bind to other things. So when we draw our Lewis dot structure, it should look a little something like this. Xenon is going to have more than eight valence electrons, but that's because it's in the third period or lower. And each fluorine is going to have eight valence electrons. Xenon is going to be our center. We're going to have four things attached to it. And we also have those two lone pairs. So the geometry type that we'd get is AB4E2. And when we look at what molecular shape it would give us, it would give us a square planar. And again, it's a little hard to see. So when we redraw it, here we can see that these fluorines are all going to be in a square as far away from each other. And the reason that they don't go up or down is because we have these two lone pairs keeping them in their place. For our next one, we have xenon difluoride. Again, xenon is eight valence electrons. Fluorine is going to have two. 
Our little thought structure should look like this. The xenon again can hold more than eight because it's in the third crater lower. And it will just shove those extra electrons in the d orbital. Xenon is going to be our center. We're going to have two things attached to it and three lone pairs around it. So our geometry type is going to be AB2E3. And that's going to give us a shape of linear. Um, redrawing it, it would look a little something like that. And just like our iodide, our triiodide ion molecule, it's going to have these three lone pairs keeping everything in place. And the fluorine will be above the page and below the page. Next up, we have chlorine trifluoride. Chlorine is going to have seven valence electrons. Each fluorine is going to have seven. So when we draw our Lewis dot structures, it's going to look something like this. Chlorine, because it's in the third period, it can hold more than eight. Chlorine is going to be our center. We have three atoms attached to it, and we still have those two lone pairs. So we're going to have a geometry type of AB3E2. And that's going to give us a molecular shape of a T-shape. And again, redrawing this, we can see the T-shape where we're going to have a lone pair coming out of the page when going in. And these three fluorines are just going to be as far away as each other as they possibly can. We're almost done. For our next one, we have silicon tetrachloride. Silicon is going to have four valence electrons and each chlorine is going to have seven. So our Lewis dot structure should look like this. Silicon is going to have eight valence electrons, or eight shared electrons. Each chlorine is going to have eight. Silicon is going to be our center molecule. Four things attached to it. So we have a geometry type of AB4. And that's going to give us a molecular shape of tetrahedral. And this one is going to be exactly the same as our methane. For our last one, we have an iodine dichloride ion. Iodine is going to have seven valence electrons. Each chlorine is going to have seven. But we also have that extra electron from the ion. Before adding that extra electron, our Lewis dot structure should look a little something like this. Each chlorine is going to have eight valence electrons. And we do have this lone electron. And instead of having it be alone, I'm just going to take this extra electron that I have there and place it here. Now, because it is an ion, we can't forget to put our brackets on. We have iodine as our center. We have two things attached to it, but we also have three lone pairs. So that's going to give us a geometry type of AB2E3, which gives us a molecular shape of linear. And this one is going to be exactly like our xenon difluoride example and that's gonna be it thank you all for stopping by if you have any questions don't forget to send myself or mr morgan a message on schoology other than that stay safe and i'll see you all next time